Welcome to the 76 Capital Leadership Series. I'm your host, Wayne Kimmel, and managing partner of 76 Capital. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Wayne Kimmel all over the place, uh, whether that's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Um, you find you can find me out there, and we're always looking for the next next entrepreneur at 76 Capital. So that's what we're all about here. Our producer for our show is, as usual, James Santor. You can find James on the on Twitter as well at at James Santor, and he's all about saving LaSalle baseball. So if you want to, you know, do a solid there, you know, check out what he's doing there. It's been amazing to see the work that he's done um, or in and around bringing back baseball to LaSalle University and all the great things that he does at 76 Capital as well. This show is all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, and athletes to talk about the next, next things that are going on in the sports industry. And you can find all of our shows on all of our social networks at 76 Capital. As I mentioned earlier, I'm at Wayne Kimmel. Um, all the social networks, is including YouTube, and all of our shows are available on podcast as well, whether that's your, what's your podcast of choice, whether that's Apple, whether that's um, Spotify, you name it, you'll find it. It's out there. And we always have great guests and great stories. And today we really have a special one today. I'm really excited to bring on a good friend, uh, CEO of The Score. Uh, John Levy is somebody, you can find him at The Score Commish uh, on, on Twitter. You can look, see The Score on Twitter as well. Um, and just that app, I mean, the app that we're going to be talking about, that that I, 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 tell, I tell John this story all the time about my son, how much he loves The Score app. And how he's, you know, he said, Dad, you don't look at that ESPN stuff. You got to use the score. So that's what we're really excited to bring John on to share his story. Um, it's it's more than just a sports story. It's more than just tech. It's more than what's happening within sports betting. It's also a story about family. It's also about a story about, you know, bringing people together and doing the right thing. So I'm really excited to bring on the CEO of The Score, John Levy. John, welcome to our 76 Capital Leadership Series. Thank you, man. Wayne, it's such a pleasure to be here. You're doing a terrific job with these shows and these podcasts, and uh, congratulations on all this. It's a great, great effort. Amazing. Well, well thank you. And, and it really has been so much fun um, getting the opportunity to talk with people like you who are, who are really pushing things forward within the sports industry and, and, and hearing, I mean, look, you're doing things not only in the traditional sports world, the esports world and the sports betting world. These are all the three things that we do at 76 capital. And I'm so excited about this conversation today. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's really a, it's, it's a treat um, because, you know, we we're joking about before we came on, um, you know, it really is about the story and, 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 how we got where we are and and you know a lot of obviously doing a lot of interviews and and a lot of stuff from press and stuff and you know they, they sort of start off okay so past befell and you guys got involved in sports betting and then i got to sort of pull them back and say that's kind of the culmination of of what's been going on for oh my god i can't years and years i mean i, I could take you way back you know with respect to betting when i was you know, with my dad a uh, hundred years ago and, you know, it was a Sunday and, you know, the phone would ring and I'd pick it up and then it's your father there, you know, and it was, you know, the, the book and my turn it over to my dad. I was scared. I was nervous and he'd make his bets on a Sunday and we'd sit and watch the games. And, and, you know, that was what we grew up in. I mean, sports betting and sports with the passion for it was just always a part of, of your life and, and uh, you know, treated responsibly and all that sort of stuff. And then, through business and through your whole sort of existence, um, you know, family was important. I, I was started in my dad's cable business in Canada. That's how it all started. He was in, my dad was one of the first guys in cable TV in the fifties. I grew up in that, in that business. I actually am a lawyer. I don't admit that to many people never practiced a day in my life. I promise. But, uh, you know, I got into the cable business and, and, you know, one of the you know seventh or eighth largest independent cable operator in Canada. And, and before we sold out as part of one of the rounds of consolidations, we started that amazing little television network in Canada, right? Called The Score. It was actually called Headline Sports first. And actually it was called Sportscope first and then Headline Sports, which I thought was a very cool name, Headline Sports, except there was this little pesky network in the States uh, that had this little sports segment called Headline Sports that uh, didn't think it was such a good idea that we use that name. 
Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other story, actually, because they actually came after us to, to, to stop using headline sports, right? And, uh, um, you know, I had my lawyers look at it, and for sure we were okay in Canada. The irony was we were actually okay in the States, right? We actually could have got them to shut down using it for their little, you know, on the 20s, that headline news had uh, yeah. headline sports, remember that? So we actually could have... So, you know, the lawyer said, look, you were there first, you're fully registered, you've got it, you could get them to shut down. And so we sort of, I, I went, you know, talked to, to my guys and Benji was, was just starting to get involved then. And, you know, I said, okay, so we can win this fight, but you know, there's a real moral lesson here. You can be right, right, right. And then you're broke because it's hard to fight these guys, right? So long story short, we said, let's not fight. We changed the name and came up with the score, which actually was probably even a better name than uh, Headline Sports. And that's how it really started with our TV network. And it was very cool. It was fun. I mean, I, well, I could just keep talking forever, Wayne, but it was like, you know, we had, when we launched in the, in the nineties, mid nineties, our version of ESPN had a head start on us. It's called TSN. Actually ESPN owned part of that. And um, there's actually another Philly connection with, with headline sports too. Actually, I could tell you about too. A guy by the, you know, a guy named Mickey Charles. You ever, does that ring a bell with you? A guy in Philly, a broadcaster, he had a company called TSN and that was really, he was a, like a data provider, one of the first data providers. And uh, that was like another connection to Philly actually. So he, we got the data from him initially. So anyway, in the mid nineties, we started the TV network and it was fun. It was, you know, ESPN was the, or TSN was the formal one, the shirt and tie button down sports guys. And then we show up with a bunch of hacks or like, guys you go to the bar with go drinking with and there are no shirt and ties nothing like your shirt my shirt even, not even this shirt like a t-shirt so uh you know they they with a ticker on the bottom that had never went away and had the odds on it our guys always talked about betting always i mean it was just part of the nature of why they love sports you know and when you know when the other when I, when a guy kicked a useless field goal to put it over a 15 point spread the other networks are getting uncomfortable and they're going well, i think that's interesting to some people you know our guys are freaking pulling their hair out because they probably lost a 50 dollars bet right so people could relate to that you know and um and that's that's kind of was really the beginning of of the real sort of so, well, john, john real, real quick to interrupt not, not to interrupt but you yeah, no, i can you know me too. Well, this was this was all happening in in Toronto, if I understand. Correct, right? correct. Everything at this point before we launched the digital aspect was all Toronto. Cable was Canada. The TV network was only Canada. Uh, you know, you had to get licenses up here. RFCC called the CRTC would give you a license, but and we knew we could never take our TV network into the states. Um, you couldn't compete with the big guys at that point in time, and because they were way out ahead of you, and no matter how cool you thought it was, it wasn't going to work. We were never going to be. So you, all, you know, in my mind, I always knew we were building. Like the cable thing was great, the TV asset was amazing. I loved it, but you always knew it had borders around it, right? At some point, one of the big guys was going to come and write you a check, and even though it was your baby, you built it from scratch. You knew somebody was going to put, you know, make make you that offer that that you just couldn't say no to, right? And and, um, you know, you could shoo them away year after year, but eventually it was going to get picked up by either the TV, the, the uh, uh, you know, the, the Bell Globes of the world for TSN or by Rogers, the big broadcaster. And in fact, that's what happened. You know, Rogers came along and finally put the number down that was right for us. But what was cool was because our audience was young and because we were building the brand and, and the, it was meaning something, we'd already launched our digital platform. So... You know, we were, all, you know, our first app was on the flip phone, on a Razor flip phone, if you remember that, right? And and then, you know, BlackBerry shows up out of Waterloo in Canada with the first real sophisticated device um, that everybody all across North America was using. So we ported our app to that. And then iOS shows up and Android shows up. So before we knew it, we were like, we were, you know, in millions of homes all across North America. So we we're starting to believe that this little thing that we incubated inside our TV network, inside of Score Media, was really now something that had, you know, international and, and potentially global global legs to it, right? And couldn't be restrained by a border. It was, it was just something that worked because it scratched an itch of sports fans all over. It didn't matter whether you're Canadian or US. What, what mattered is, where are you? And can I provide all this information, this data, this content to you on a localized basis that makes sense to you? And, and 
So it's growing, growing, growing. And then when Roger showed up to buy the thing, we were lucky it was Roger's. So he didn't give a shit. Uh, uh, he didn't give a heck about our brand. It was because anything was Roger's. So we got to keep the score. And they weren't interested in in digital because they were still the traditional legacy broadcaster. And they, of course, they needed my TV network because they, they it was a younger audience. And they needed the fifth or sixth television network to add on to their four that people were starting not to watch as much anyway. So uh, so we sold it and then we were hundred percent mobile, um, focused our attention to it. Um, you know, it, 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 you know, not making any money. I mean, in our typical fashion, right. Uh, the, the TV network wasn't making money, wasn't making money, started to make money, started to make money and then boom, it's gone. Right. And then the digital asset on, underneath, you know, hard, as you know, Wayne, it's hard to make money in the digital landscape, but you got to get eyeballs. And now we started to get, you know, four or 5 million users and hitting the app 140, 150 times. So yeah, advertisers starting to get interested in, in, in either direct basis or in, on a digital basis, you could sell advertising. So it's just about to start to make money. And now all of a sudden we repivot and say, okay, that's not good enough. We're going into the sports betting business, but not just as an affiliate, but as a real operator. And and so so before we get there, John, I, yeah. I want to think. I want to want to just want to step back for one second. I mean, no, I, think, no, no, for sure. I, I I love I love your passion, your energy, and your excitement. And it's yeah. so great to have John Levy, the CEO of the Score, on our seventy six Capital Leadership Series. You can again find John at the Score Commish on Twitter, or just go to at um, the Score. On Instagram, on Twitter, or Instagram, or everywhere. You got. If you don't subscribe to that, you're missing out. I mean, you're just you're missing out to all all the great content that John has and his team is putting out there. And when you talk about John, you mentioned your dad. Um, you mentioned your sons really quickly. Um, yeah. You know, I I love for you to sort of talk about the the the, the family story and the family business. And now uh, this family, you guys have done so much in sports. And it's so great to to work with with you and your sons and just tell us the whole story. Yeah, it's it's I pinch myself. I'm you know, there's Benji. Um, I think we were at the well, I can't remember what conference it is. So, you know, I joke about the fact he's been with me for about 20 years. He's actually been with me for 40 years since the day he was born. Um he basically runs the whole show for, uh, you know, he's been tremendously instrumental in, in all aspects. Um, you know, was there with the TV network, helped me convince me that it was the right time to sell the TV network. And, and, and you know, I'm so lucky. I worked with my dad, like, you know, I, I grew up, I, you know, I, I, like, I went to law school, I articled and then boom, right into the cable business. Right. And I was the youngest of three, my brother, my older brother was not involved. Um, and my sister didn't want to be involved and I was the baby and I got involved with my dad and it was, it's, you know, it's a lot, a lot of this is timing, right? So it just happened to be, I was a, the, the third child, right place at the right time. And I had an interest in it. I loved it. I worked in the cable office every summer as a kid. Um, I was right there with my dad. I, I tell Benji, he doesn't believe me. I actually, you know, was out on the poles in the cable business, you know, and, you know, very dangerous for a Jewish kid, you know, to be carrying around a whole a reel of cable and a ladder. You know, you could kill people doing that. And uh, but I did it. And it was a time, that's, that's why they, that's why our dad sent us to law school. Right. I mean, that's that's exactly right. right. They didn't want us to, you know, take somebody's head off with a freaking ladder that you couldn't balance. Right. Or fall out. of. I remember you know, pre-wiring this building in the West End of Hamilton coming home. I had so much dust in my nose and my face. I was like, I, I couldn't breathe for two days. So. But um, great experience working with my dad, and and it was it was right for him. He was sort of retiring and sort of, sort of you know settling back a little bit, and you know like all the shit, all the stuff he did, like to get into the cable business in the fifties, like well, like he was a lawyer, right? And he hated it, and he did all sorts of other entrepreneurial stuff. And then, you know, two guys walk into his office and say, you know, instead of everybody having an antenna on the roof, why don't we put an antenna? You know, why don't we put an antenna in the escarpment? We live in a city called Hamilton outside of Toronto, and there's an escarpment. Put one antenna there, run some cables down into people's houses. They'll give them better reception. You're going to sell them stuff they get for free? Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's the idea. So my dad, no bank would touch him. No bank. So he gets, he gets eight of his buddies to put up, I don't know, thirty or 40,000 bucks a piece. This is the truth, the mid-50s. They, 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 they string up, a, you know, the, the antenna on the, on, the, on the escarpment. They run cables literally on the ground. My dad hires, gets a trailer, gets it's two girls to go door to door, knocks on the door. And that's how it started. Literally, that's how he started. And a year out, the six of the eight partners said he was crazy. 
And he said, okay, so you want out, I presume. He says, yeah, give me my money back. So one of the other guys was a partner, was a cousin. The two of them took the rest of them out. And it was him and a cousin, actually, of his, that started the cable business. Anyway, I'm going way back. Anyway, but the bottom line is it was it's always been about family. And, and you know, Benji's been with me. His I've got four kids, boy, boy, girl, boy. All three boys are in with me now. And it's amazing because they all have different talents and they all have different um, contributions, you know, like Benji's obviously been around the longest. He runs everything. Aubrey came in, you talked about esports. He's created the whole esports environment for us. I think Wayne, you've talked to him about it. It's an amazing business. We're incubating yeah. that inside of the score. It you was know, incredible. I mean, Aubrey came and, and, and spoke at our, um, our one of the our, actually our last conference uh, in right. Atlantic City, right, right before the oh, the pandemic really yeah. hit here in the U.S. I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just how he's directing it and how we're, you know, it's, it's, again, it's, it's, you know, the sort of family and business and they really do meld and it, and it not only melds that way, it also melds in how you treat your employees and because your employee, it's, it, it can't help, but sort of be a family business. If you're a family business, you can't be a family within a business. that's a bunch of jerks. If you know what I mean, you're, you're either a family business or you're not. And if you don't treat everybody else the same way you treat your own family, then it doesn't work. And I think if you talk to all of our employees or a lot of our employees and we're back up to almost 300 employees, they'll tell you, it feels different. It's, it's just, you know, we're a public company, we're big, we're growing, we're ambitious, but there's something at the core. The, my third guy, Noah, um, Went to school in the States. He went to school in Texas, you know, did a bunch of digital stuff in New York. Um, and he's been with me now for a couple of years. And he's gravitated towards, uh, and it was basically coincident with the betting and, and, but creating, you know, the app and the score bet and its full integration into it. So, you know, you got Benji doing this, you got Aubrey doing, you know, uh, uh, biz dev marketing and esports. And then you got Noah working with our head engineer on the product side you know, it's amazing. It's, it's like, I, it doesn't, trust me, it's not easy all the time. We have some whopper fights, like crazy fights. It's, it's, it, but it's family, right? It's family. And you, and, and you, uh, you wouldn't expect it any other way, but it works at the end of the day, it works. And, you know, we're all in it for the same thing, which is the, the passion of what we're building, the family aspect to it. And, um, and, and just the whole business, the whole business itself is really, uh, is, is really one big, one big unit. And, uh, and, if, and, and the other side of it, Wayne is, you know, who we're up against, right? We're up against the biggest of the freaking bigs. I mean, there's no protection now. I don't have a little license in Canada that nobody can touch unless they buy it. Right. We're up against the big TV networks. We're up against the big betting companies We're you know, more of it are coming. Right. And we're all fighting for the same access. Right. And, and, uh, in the U S and, and soon actually in Canada, we could talk about that too, but, um, but I definitely, I definitely want to talk about that. I definitely, definitely want to talk definitely, about that. Great. That's what yeah, drives and, and I think what, what one of the things we should would be really great, I think, for the for, for our audience is also to talk about. So you have this app that millions and millions of people are using. Right. Right. It's it's the fastest one out there. It's got the best information. Um, and then password gets overturned. And as you said earlier, um, it was is as if it wasn't like, oh, my God, people are now starting to bet because it's May 14th, 2018, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, you're, you've had, you had had a, a lot of this information um, on yeah. the app Better. prior to this, right? It was a great, great place to find, you know, this, this, um, the lines and other data around sports betting. Correct. And then it was like, wow, you couldn't, you know, you just, you, but then you went for it here in, um, and, and, and I'd love to hear that story and, and, and how you decided to just go. It really, yeah, it, 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 it that was really our, uh, one of the aha moments, right? You get these big moments when you're building the businesses, right? Like the big moment, is it right? Is it the right time to sell the TV asset and just become hundred percent mobile? That's a big moment, right? Cause if you're wrong and you lose the support of the thing that's making all the money, you pick, you could be, bucked. you could be done. Right. So, um, um, you know, the aha moment for us was when PASPA fell, you know, and again, cause we've lived through all this, and we're a public company and you're conscious about the bottom line and you want to make money, but you also want to invest for the future. The easiest thing for us to, to have done would have been just become a super affiliate. Look, in when we were on the TV days and the poker was going crazy, right? And then DFS shows up and, and in the mobile space too. You know, those 
they were and they are throwing money at it. I don't want to say like drunken sailors, but but gobs and gobs, high costs of acquisition just to um, just to acquire users. Right. And, you know, we enjoyed that as a TV network and as a digital network originally. So, you know, we're sitting there thinking, geez, you know, we could really take in a lot of cash and a lot of advertising revenue. Just direct people who are, you know, 50% of all of our users bet on sports. What do you think? Let's just direct them over. We're going to get paid royally for it because there's so much money in this thing. No risk, no, you know, and, and, uh, and then we said, you know what? That's stupid because we spent all these years building the asset. We built this relationship. We built the user base who loves, who loves the app, who loves the brand, who bet on sports. You know, it's really not even a matter of converting these guys to something. They're already there. Just make it available. Just, you know, all the other betting apps for the most part are just transactional apps. You go, you bet, and then you go someplace else to get your media, whether it's television or digital or wherever you're going, radio, wherever, podcasts, wherever. And then you go to these transactional you know, uh, platforms called betting apps to make your bet. They have started to try to incorporate some features in them that give you some data and some information, but for the most part, it's pretty raw. In our case, you know, we've done the tough thing. We've already, you know, worked with data suppliers. We, you know, we've got engineers working for years, as you said, Wayne, to be the fastest, the best, the most accurate, the most personalized, all that. So we said, no, this, this, is, this is ridiculous. You know, and what's that expression? You, why give away the milk when you the, when got the cow? I mean, that's basically was our decision. So, so let's build that betting app. Obviously it has to be separate because you got to get licensed in each jurisdiction, but our whole philosophy was entirely different than everybody else's. The whole idea is to integrate the opportunity to make a bet into basically the betting, into the media. So use the touch points. When somebody's, you know, when somebody's on a box score and they're looking at our data or they're reading content or they're doing whatever, give them the opportunity to build a bet slip. One of the simplest things, right? Don't force them to go anywhere else. If they want to make a bet, um, build the bet slip right in the media app. And this was like, this is like, I would call it integration 101, the very simplest of things, right? Allow you to flip back and forth from the media app to the betting app with, with, with in a seamless fashion without really the user. This is obviously once you've registered on the score because right. you have to register. We have to you know, know your client, go through all the regulatory processes. But once you're on, make, make the experience like, like you're, you're still in the score. And, and that's what we did. And, and, um, and, and sort of, again, leading, it, it really is, not a new idea. It was the same idea we did on the ticker on the TV network. Why wouldn't you put the odds on the ticker? I mean, you're already watching this amazing TV network. We're already get, so why am I, why do I force you to open a, a newspaper or go to a, a, another site? Just give it to him. He wants to give it to him. And you know what? Make them live so that during the games, maybe they, they change. So people are interested in that. So it was, it, it's really, you know, so it's it's really a core idea that wasn't new, and that's why I laugh about it with Paspa. When Paspa fell, it was it's nothing new. What we're going to do is we're just going to do what we've always done. Let's scratch an itch here. Let's just give people what they want. And listen, you know, once you make the decision, now you got a lot of a lot of work. Now, now you know, it's, it's it's one thing to think it up here or to, to oh, hey, aren't we smart? We're just we're smart because we're 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 following the consumer. We're not smart because we're smart. We're follow we're we're just listening, right? We're just paying attention. So, so, uh, uh, but now you got to execute. So now what do you need? Oh my God. Well, okay. So first, first thing I need the back end. So I go, I go, I go to my chief engineer. Okay. Hesham. I love the guy. He's been with me a number of years. He's family. He is family. Not exactly family, but he's family. So, um, uh, he's bald like me. So he's, anyway, so the bottom line is I, go, I said, Hesham, we're going to build a betting, you know, in a fully integrated fashion and blah, blah, blah. How do we do this? How long, how much, how long? He says, okay, so it's probably going to cost you 30 or $40 million for me to build this thing the same way, probably conservatively a little bit more, uh, the same way that we built the, the, the score app and, and, you know, uh, natively authentic, uh, the way we do it, not just the way others do the way we do it. I said, you know, I swallowed hard. I said, okay, so let's say I have that. We could do that. What's the timing he says, yeah, but two and a half, three years. Okay. I said, what? I said, I was maybe choking on the 30 or 40 million bucks, but we don't have three or four years, two or three years. We got to be up in front of last year's NFL season. 
He said, well, I can't do it. There's just no way. I can't build an app like that, like you would want, that would be the type of app that, that we'd be proud of, that would work in an integrated fashion. So not then we couldn't do that. So now we had to go and find it. So we, we you know, the first thing we did is we did our deal with Betworks in uh, Nevada, um, David Wang's business. And uh, that gave us the back end. And, you know, we, we looked, we scoured everyone. We looked, you know, we looked in Europe, we looked in, Canada, in North America. We couldn't have somebody too big because we knew the big guys wouldn't pay attention to us as we were building this thing out in an integrated fashion. And you, they still to the day don't do that because it's very difficult to make changes. We didn't want somebody too small because we wanted to be credible. And we wanted somebody in the States who understood the US market, not the global market, but the US betting market. So that works was perfect for us. And we built it and, and we did the deal with them. So that allowed us to do the back end. So now our now the our engineers furiously working over four or five months to build the front end to build the score bet front end which would integrate with with the betting technology that David was providing with us was and 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 now now we need access oh my god so the next thing we had to do so now you know we're into New Jersey and we find Dennis Drazen at Monmouth Park amazing guy and had a, he had a, a a skin available so we did the deal with him. Uh, so now, unbelievably or not, if we, if we can build this thing and get it up in time for NFL season, we'd be in the business. In business. Um, but before we did that, we also then signed a deal with, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to get our skins all across the U.S., right? So we did our deal with Penn National that got us 11 more states as the licensing process. So that was a fairly big deal for us. And Penn actually took it um, instead of getting cash. Penn did a uh, the deal where they took uh, equity in our company, which was very nice. So um, so now we're chugging along towards launch, and our guys are like we're driving them like crazy, you know. Like I mean, like it's oh yeah, let's just do this. Shut up, John. We got to really do this now. You shut up. It's time for us to work, right? So so now the, the they're they're like all, literally almost around the clock to get this thing up and operating before um, last year's NFL season, and they do it. And it's oh, oh before we do that, by the way, we. Uh, we also signed, I think another, there was another deal for Colorado that was signed way back then as well. So it wasn't just that deal. It was also looking to do more and more and more. <clears throat> so, and, and then, and John, in the midst of all this, you have to get a license, right? I mean, the, uh, the, the, the license itself, I mean, you, you get the partner, but then you have to go through the licensing process. What was that like? Well, I, I don't know how many proctology exams you've been through, but it's, it's detailed and it's, listen, the truth of the matter is though, it's also interesting and probably one of the smartest things we did in the history that I talked about is always hoping and believing and praying that sport, the governments were going to come to their senses and finally figure out, don't let this go to the black market in the U S or the gray market in Canada. Let's license the tax and regulate it. You know, we always kept ourselves really clean. I, I don't just mean from a personal standpoint, of course we're clean from a personal standpoint. I'm talking about from a corporate standpoint, we didn't go offshore. We didn't do any of the things that could have negatively impacted our ability to get licenses. Um, and, um, and that's paid off in spades because, you know, yes, we had to go get our license in New Jersey. Yes. We got to get a license in Colorado. Yes. We got to get our license in Indiana. Uh, and, and it's not just me and Ben, the family it's, you know, senior executives, it's the, you know, head tech guys is the, uh, our CFOs, everything. So, um, you know, and, and interestingly enough, that's probably one of the, also one of the reasons a lot of the big other media companies aren't getting and you know into the operations of, of running a betting operation because you know they don't want to get licensed in a lot of cases right and, and number one the revenue and the money involved for them when they're running these massive cbs's nbc's espn's all these M nbc's you know it it's a big deal for it's a big big industry for sure but not when you're comparing it to what their existing revenues are right so why am I going to go through all that crap now? I'll wait till somebody else does it. Then we'll buy them. And if I have to get licensed, I'll get licensed down the road. Right. So, um, um, you know, that's, and that's one of the reasons you see some of these, these deals that are out there now. Right. I mean, why all of them, every one of them, NBC, CBS, you know, uh, points bet and NBC. What, well, you know, what is that? Well, I'll take a, you know, I'll take an interest in the company and then that money floats back as advertising. And listen, I'm not demeaning it. Those are, those are important deals and it shows the interest in the industry. Um, but it's, 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 you know, it's not the type of deals that, that we want to do or have to do because we sort of already have both those sides, uh, covered. I mean, it's a slower process for us. It's a, it's a, it's a more, um, um, gradual approach. We're not in the market trying to buy 30% market share. Like some of my, some of the competitors are, we are building it on a slow, steady basis and, and, and trying to build this to, to be around, not just for next year or the year, this quarter, next quarter, one or two years but to really take a leadership position, but get there over time, 
and do it in a, do it in a sensible fashion. So, well, look, um, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, the sports betting industry, you know, since May of 2018 has just you know accelerated like crazy in the in the United States, and you know it's super exciting. It's what we at 76 Capital are, are heavily invested in. Uh, it's we've had a number of really exciting guests on our 76 Capital Leadership Series who have talked about sports betting. Many of which say you know that the the estimates that are out there as to what this industry will look like in the future, it, they they're so undershooting what the the, the real potential is. Uh, we get obviously get very excited about hearing those things, uh, but from your perspective, I'd love to hear you know from the score and what you've been doing. Have there been any like big surprises or things that have you, you you're like wow I didn't realize or how big this was going to be or how tough this was going to be or just was is there anything that you would sort of put your finger on at this at this point this early stage of the of the industry? Um, I you know what I. There's no been no there's been no disappointing surprises if you know what I mean. Everything's been sort of confirmations of what we believe, right? Um, you know, you, you never anticipate the pandemic for sure. Um, who you know, you know, we were ramping up last year for our you know we got through our first quarter and second quarter because our year starts in in September. Uh, it's a hangover from Canadian companies. Canadian regulated companies all have to end on August 31st. So we've always kept that. So, you know, we got, we launched them with NFL. We got through our first quarter, second quarter was better than the first and we're getting ready for our first March madness and then boom, everything, everything stops. So, you know, we can, we, we can discuss that in a minute, but I think, um, no, I, I think the lessons we've learned over the years completely translate into building this business as well. Um, I, you know, I we always anticipated that states were going to open up faster than most. We were a little more aggressive than most, and and now with pandemic, that's even happening faster as governments need to replenish their coffers. So, I mean, that might have been, you know, the 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 acceleration of that might have been a little faster even without COVID than than we anticipated. The amount of work that's going into this thing was clearly something we anticipated by because you know we had to build up our our uh, engineering base and our product team to do this. Um, I, you know, I don't, I, um, I, I think it's, I think the bottom line, Wayne, is it's, it's really still almost too early for there to be surprises. We're just scratching the surface, right? I mean, you know, we, we joke about 50% of our users on the app, on the media app, bet on sports. And, you know, we're obviously going after them first and in the context of, of making score bet available to them and doing it in a very cost efficient, cost efficient way. But, you know, it really gets sexy and interesting when you start to think about the other 50% that don't yet bet on sports and, and, you know, all the data that we're collecting. And again, very early days and, and people, you know, you know, the other guys are just sort of out there trying to race to get as much market share. And, and, you know, I know what a better is. Let's get as many of them as we can and let's generate as much revenue as we can. And, and let's see what the hold and the take is. And, 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 um, but there's, there's so many higher levels of sophistication that are, you know, when you think of normal digital companies, when you invest in these companies, right, it's all about the data. It's all about, you know, how do you farm? How do you, how do you cultivate all this information that you're getting um, you know, and, 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 you know, there's, there's so many simple things that we can do to make life easier for betters and for, for non-betters to, to cultivate that. And, and we're not even, you know, I mean, uh, betting companies still do yeah. stupid stuff. I mean, you know, like, like, I know you only bet on NBA, so why do I force soccer and cricket and all this other crap on you in front of making a bet or i know you like a certain team so why don't i just serve it up in a certain fashion that makes it easier for you or or if i know you like to do things certain way you know it's like in a digital landscape people would laugh at you if 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 they saw how our companies not not ours of course but how yes ours yes sorry even us today i mean we laugh about how early it is, and like even like even this this whole integration that we're talking about, right? We brag about everything we're doing so far. Like, well, I'll come, I promise, I'll come on a year. For, uh, we're actually launching phase two of it um, this week. I swear, this week it's just going out on iOS, and um, you know, there's actually going to be a bet section right inside the media app. You know, and it's it's like um, so you can do marvelous things. Now, obviously it's got to be within the regulations and everything's got to work according to the rules, but again, to try to make things easier. And even after you get that, you know, 
uh, you know, simple stuff like, you know, follow your bets and make and update the information on a live basis and all that. Like it's, this is like if somebody dropped down from Mars and they were looking at the business, they would say, what do you mean you're not doing this? Of course you should be doing this. What are you stupid? You know, like how, you got betters out here who want the way this is the way they want to do stuff. You're not, I'm like, but then start to layer all the other interesting stuff on, right. That, that you, you know, that you hire different people to, to, to figure out. And that's when it gets really fun. And, and that's where we are. We're, and that's, what's so exciting about the industry is that there's, that we really haven't gotten to the level of where the Googles and the Facebooks and the Instagram, and like we're not there yet. We could only, we know what this will look like. Right. Even it was, you know, what's amazing to me, even those guys, when, you know, those smart guys, right? the guys that you and I invest in and we love and we listen to every day. So they got into sports. So what did they do? One of them. Okay. So let's buy 10 baseball games in midweek. You know who I'm talking about, right? So they bought 10 baseball games midweek and they thought, okay, and they're going to stream them on their platform. Like what? What I mean, you, you, you're so sophisticated. Like, like I'm just saying, I and mean, people are just so hungry to get into this because they, I think they appreciate. And I, I'm no, I don't want to crap on anybody. I mean, I'm glad the big guys are are starting to look at it and get involved because it's going to be more innovative and greater thinking about it. But absolutely, and 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 it's and as we said, so it's so early here in the U.S. And what's next? The one of the big opportunities right now is also Canada, Correct. right? So. And, and you being based there, um, you know, I know you've, you've been very active. You've been posting, you know, um, articles and letters and, you know, tell me about that. I mean, it's just fascinating. I, I, one last thing on that. I mean, it's just been amazing to see all of the major league commissioners. You we're know, in. We're they're in. in. <laughs> they're in. I mean, they were so against it in the U.S. Now they're I in. I was doing people. an interview yesterday. This is really funny. I was doing an interview yesterday, and one of the guys from the NFL, smart, smart guys, were, were, were on, and and um, um, it was hosted by, I don't know, one of the – anyway, so so um, at the end, they were talking about how amazing this whole thing is and what the opportunity is, and it's kind of what surprises along the lines of what you were asking, and and – you know, and at the end, I just sort of wrapped up and I said, he said, so what, actually, he said, well, well, what's one of the things that surprised you most or excites you most? I said, you know what really excites me? What really excites me is I'm sitting here with a senior official from the NFL and we're talking about sports betting and we're talking about how important that is. And I said, it wasn't so long ago that if I even mentioned this, I, right. I, I, I would have been, you know, alienated, right? And and uh, I, I would have had to do what the guys on the networks do when they talk about that spread, you know, that's interesting to some people, you know. And here we're having this open and honest discussion, and you know, along the points of what you had, and I, and and you know, when you think about the innovation that's taking place here, p p part of the reason it never happened up until recently, until PASPA, basically, uh, was was because people were afraid to talk about it. They like they like. You know, the leagues weren't endorsing it. Networks wouldn't want to talk about it. The only people who want to talk about it were the people who were betting on it and in love sports and were passionate about sports, right? So, you know, what's really exciting to me is this whole thing is coming out of the closet and, and fast over the last couple of years, right? And and when that happens, as it is now happening, that's when these exciting new opportunities are 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 taking shape, right? Because um, right now everybody's just trying to play catch up. They're trying to say. Uh, I got to have the core product. I got to have the core type of bets available. I got, I got to at least be able to do digitally and legally and in a licensed fashion, what everybody's been doing illegally for a number of years. So, so that's why everybody's racing towards just trying to duplicate what appeared and did work for the last 50 years in an unregulated environment. So once we get through that, um, that's when the real innovation starts. That's, you know, that's when, you know, all hold, all, all holds are all, all, everything is off. All gloves are off and, 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 and you can get really creative in, in, uh, you know, I mean, I think, you know, what we're at the, I think we're at the tip of the, you know, of the whole broadcast sports broadcast industry is going to be completely different over the next three, five, 10 years for sure. And I think what's really sexy and interesting is sports betting is one of the catalysts that's driving this, you know, you got, People don't watch games on television like they used to. Surprise. Why Why are these networks, why are the leagues, why are they so interested? Well, you know why they're interested. They see their audience diminishing. They see the engagement diminishing. 
I mean, with the best product, the best, the best, the, the amazing games, hockey, basketball, football, baseball, uh, f amazing games. But, you know, I was going to say my kids now, but my grandkids, uh -huh. um, you know, you think they're going to consume this shit the way every, no way, no way. They're not doing it now. They're, they've, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost seems too simple to say, but it's the truth. I mean, you got to figure out a new way of engaging them. And it's not just taking the same, you know, take that game and stream it on this platform. I mean, yeah, it's important that I can, but it, that's, there's more to life than that, right? That's not the, that's not the whole answer. The whole answer is they're going to walk away from that just like they're walking away from television. So you got to figure out other ways to engage them. And I'm not saying betting is the end all and be all, but it certainly adds a new layer of, of excitement and engagement that pre presents other opportunities. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think that's, th th that's one of the really big things that that's happening right now is, is really thinking about the way that um, younger people will consume sports. They consume it differently than we do. Um, and it's not that they don't, they're not into it as much. They Correct. actually, I would argue they are into it more um, and they, and they like it more. It's just that it's, they, they, they consume it differently. Correct. And and that and that's those are the and that's the kind of the challenges that we have as 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 an as industry people and as an industry you know, to be able to try to figure it out. And it's no different than every other industry. It's no different than the print industry. It's no different. And it's not just sports and broadcasting. It's all of broadcasting. You know what? Where did Netflix come from? You know where did cut the cord come from? You know where like where did all this? Sh where did it all come from? It came from the fact that people evolve. <laughs> they do things differently today. Technology is is open everybody's life up um and and to to to, to not be uh reactive to that it leads to legacy companies and legacy positions and it's hard. listen it's hard i we were in both camps we had a tv network and a digital business that we were building right we were sort of one leg in one and one in the other and you know i love that tv asset you know i le love the score i mean it was ours our baby it was irreverent we were, we were throwing salt in everybody's eyes all, every day, you know, with our cool stuff. And, and they couldn't figure out what the hell we were doing. And, and it was making money. And, but until we sold it, until we sold it and became 100% mobile and digital, you couldn't, you couldn't direct your attention 100% to it. You always had to think about and worry about how do I protect that revenue stream? How do I nurture it? How do I make it as I had to? Because that was paying the bill for everything else and, and creating the value for our company. But you know, once that left the building and, and you were strictly involved in the digital space, you do think differently. And um, and I think honestly, that's that's one of the reasons you know, touch wood that we've been able to move forward and fight the battles that we're fighting. And we're going to have to continue to fight the battles. And it's not easy. You know, it's 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 every day. It's it's it's, you know, another so another affiliate, another deal is done by some of the biggies with. I mean, are there any teams left that hasn't affiliated? Are all your teams in Philly affiliated with either DraftKings or FanDuel or or one of them? I mean, is, is there any stadium left that isn't isn't named? I mean, well, not there's 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 still more because there's there's they're doing multiple deals, right? I mean, and it's just it's just it's really really interesting to see. It's one of the reasons why you know we we think you know a lot of people just again you said it earlier. This was something that you were not allowed to do a couple of years ago. You were not allowed to even know people in this industry. You weren't even allowed to even walk into casinos. You weren't allowed to walk into sports books. Now, all of a sudden, college coaches, NFL co um, professional sports teams coaches, um, the executives, the you know, everyone now needs to have understand all of this as well as have a deal. And right. so we're so, so early in all of this right now. Right. So one of the things I thought was really interesting, John, and it's so nice to have you on our 76 Capital Leadership Series and you know, as we start to wrap up here, I really, I know, I just noticed you brought on a new board member and, uh, you know, that, that's that board member, you know, Angela Ruggiero, you know, she was also a guest, um, yeah. on our 76 capital leadership series. And I'd, I'd love for you to tell us, you know, how that relationship started and, and how, and, and how excited you are to have her as part of your team now on, on your board. Yeah. She, she it just fits like a glove for us. I mean, it's like, you know, we haven't made many changes on our board, right? Good, we're busy. We got a good board. Um, you know, um, lots of lawyers, some bankers, some older guys, some younger guys. Um, but um, you know, uh, it was you know we were desperately trying to find people that more were in tune with sort of where we're going, 
you know, like, and um, I actually got to meet her through one of the guys at Relay who had done some work with Angela before. Relay is one of our big investors, right? And um, so he said, you know, why don't you talk to her? Just, you know, let me cook the two of you up. And, I, you know, I understand you're looking for some more board members or some new board members with a different perspective. Um, why don't you talk to her? So he set it up and we, we got on the phone and literally within the first 10, I, you know, I read a little bit about her and her bio and, you know, Harvard and hockey and Olympian gold medalist, blah, blah, blah. And it's all amazing. I mean, that's like, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for providing, you know, like for setting this up and, 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 but, you know, until you speak with someone and you see whether there's that personal connection or not, which is again, getting back to the type of company we are, you don't know if it's going to work. I, I knew it within the first 10 minutes on the phone conversation. She's amazing. Um, and, and not only just because of her understanding of sports, but just her passion for the, for the end user. And, and she's, she, you know, she, her thinking about how fans are consuming sports content. You read any of the stuff that she's produced and that the company that she's, you know, that she's a CEO of. And, and it is a perfect alignment with, with what we're trying to achieve. And, uh, um, so it's, it's, you know, and she is like aggressive and she's tough and she was a tough, tough hockey player. And I was telling you before, I wouldn't, I, I know somebody who played on the Canadian team up here and the Canadian women's team at the same time she was on the U S team. And they were telling me how they, one was a defenseman and one was a forward and how they used to like drop the gloves and, and, and just get at it. And, uh, that's her passion, her passion for playing sports, her passion for business and her passion for trying to figure out, um, you know, how that next generation of uh, fandom is, is going to display itself. And uh, she works with a lot of different companies and uh, we're thrilled. Uh, we're it's thrilled. really tremendous. It's we're tremendous. She's, on. Yeah. Yeah, it's she's tremendous. going to shake up our board. I'll tell you, you know, like um, they're, they're in for it now, you know, if they are, you know, anything that's not entirely in line with sort of where we're going, but more on the traditional side, I'm building my allies. Let's put it that way. On the not that I not that I have issues on the board. I don't want to give the wrong impression. I don't. It's a great board. And we work well together, and we have for a whole bunch of years, and it will continue. But now, as we move into, um, you know, digital and sports and melding of sports betting, uh, you know, just like the talent that we hire, you know, in our company, you know, um, our CFO comes from Win and Boy, uh, Bally, Boyd, and, and you know, came out of Nevada, convinced them to come up to Toronto to live and. He survived his first winter, thank God. Um, I have, having, a, have, having been a, a Southern California guy, but that's what you need. You got to build that team, and and uh, Angela is part of the board representation that we're thrilled to have. So, and hopefully find more. Hopefully find more. Well, that's great. We'll put the word out for you, and it's thank really, you. It's been amazing to have you um, on our seventy six Capital Leadership Series. I mean, talking about the future of sports betting, the what sports going on in the world of sports betting today in the U.S. and in Canada. What's going on, you know, with your company? I mean, how it's, you know, it's it's an incredible, you know, family affair, a family business that's a publicly traded company. That's so, you know, it is so so many things that you've that you've done. Um, and I, I got to give you a lot of credit and, and wish you a ton of luck in the future. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're going to need it. We're going to need that luck. I mean, you know, good to be, I always say it's, it's good to be lucky and lucky to be good. Right. And and you got to be in the right place at the right time, but you gotta, you gotta have some stuff. You, you gotta make your own luck, but it's, it's, uh, it's exciting as hell. And I, and we're and it's just starting. That's the bottom line. We'll, we'll look back at this and say, you guys, that was like so silly. I mean, you were, why were you so excited then? Well, we're going to have you back and I want to I want to have you back when when you know when things continue to just continue to grow. I mean, look, we're in the United States right now. We have 25 states plus Puerto Rico plus the um you know uh plus DC, you know, this since May of 2018 that are now have regulated sports betting. You know, we you come back on and you know, a few months yeah. from now, we'll have more, right? I mean, it's election. Just, the election, Maryland, what else? There were three that just passed, right? Maryland, what else? Uh, Maryland, Louisiana, Indiana, South Dakota, I think three, like out of, boom, out of nowhere, right? right. And, and we'll talk about, on, we'll talk, we'll talk about Canada because I'm convinced that, you know, by the time I get back with you, hopefully in the not too distant future, we're going to be uh, rocking and rolling up here too. So that'll be fun. Well, we're, we're certainly looking forward to that. And again, wish you um, the best of luck. Uh, stay safe up there and, you know, keep doing all the great things that you're doing. So, and thank you so much for joining the show. Same to you, Wayne. Continue, continue with this too. This is amazing. Great, great work. Thanks a lot. 
Appreciate that. Thanks, John. And you, you can watch our shows on all the different social media networks as well as our podcasts. Subscribe to our podcast on, on Spotify, um, on Apple Podcasts, and listen to all of our shows. Today was a really great guest. We had a great guest, the CEO of The Score, John Levy. Thank you so much for being here. And everybody, have a great night. Again, James, heck of a job back at the studio. Follow James at James Santor. I'm Wayne Kimmel, your host. John, it's been awesome. Have a great day, everybody.